Hey comrades, so I thought I would do a little vlog update on uh, what's up, what I'm gonna do in the next half a year and what my plans are actually for this rig, or rather, not this rig, it's gonna be something else. It's like a good foot of snow, or a little more. Amazing, amazing view over there. I'm at Jones Lake. Well, I wanted to get out. It's been about a month now, just over a month since I came back from Baja, a 2018 trip. And uh, I'm getting the rush, I'm getting the itch, the overland itch. And even though I hate cold, I really do. I absolutely hate cold, anything cold. Even five uh, degrees Celsius, uh, for me, it's like it's cold. But I thought I would take a bullet and actually get out somewhere close to the city, a couple of hours drive. And I thought, okay, if I do get out, well, I'm gonna do a little bit of editing in the evening of that Baja 2017 uh, trip, the next episode. I made sure I took my data with me to do that in the evening when the sun is out. That's what I do at campings when I'm solo. I actually do work, uh, editing work in the evenings. And uh, yeah, I just thought, okay, where can I actually go? Where uh, I could do like a little bit of crayfishing or something. You know, catch something while I'm actually potentially not doing anything because it's cold. Maybe I'm inside all the time. Uh, there has been snowfall and well, the whole Arctic vortex thing happening in Canada and the US. Vancouver was barely touched, but it's uh, it's gotten here, like up in the mountains and stuff. Yeah, there's definitely plenty of snow. There's like two cars here and now a 3500 there, converted from diesel to gas. A group of guys I've been hanging out with over there for like past two hours. I actually have, it's all iced. So I totally didn't expect Jones Lake to be fully iced. I thought, yeah, maybe snow a little bit here and I can throw traps. No, it's like, uh, it's like eight inches of ice. Uh, so those guys are doing uh, winter uh, fishing, uh, just day tripping, not camping. And I thought, uh, actually I asked them, they let me drill the holes. So I drilled many big holes connected to the mall to throw two traps, so two traps sitting there. And uh, I'm actually gonna go down, see if those guys want to be on camera or not want to be on camera. I have no idea, uh, but I'll tell you why I want to switch this rig. Why it's not good enough anymore for me, for my plans, for what I want to do. Again, I absolutely love this rig. I love it. I love it. It's, it's absolutely great for burst overlanding, what I call burst overlanding. But I want mobile home. I want to not pay rent, I not, uh, to not pay mortgage, I want to live out of vehicle. It's not gonna happen soon. It's gonna happen in probably a couple of years. I need to do research, lots of research. So whatever next thing that I'm doing, that it's absolutely research, so no mistakes are made whatsoever. So you don't have, so like, unlike with this rig, so I don't have to compensate for many things. Uh, again, it's great, but can you imagine with space living full-time? Let's say I'm going back, like, let's say I'm not going to Argentina yet. Let's say I'm still doing burst over landing, but I'm still working uh, office job. What I want is my home to be on wheels all the time. I'm home when I'm home in the city. I'm home when I'm on a travel. It, so I have laundry, shower, the whole amenities of small condo bachelor apartment. I want that. Uh, so my home is everywhere I need it to be. It's actually not too bad right now. It's about one Celsius probably. So that's, forgot what it's in Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit, I think 30 Fahrenheit is, uh, is uh, the sub-zero, not sub-zero, but zero temperature, kind of that threshold. I think it's 30 or 35. So it's probably somewhere around 35, 40 Fahrenheit right now. Not too bad. 
uh, it was better but now it's getting closer to the evening so it's getting a little colder so wearing gloves when i came here i didn't have any of this wear on me uh, you know what actually right now i'm getting when i arrived from two solar panels and it was completely cloudy not even sunny like this or half sunny or whatever i was getting 1.5 amps at that time still enough to charge anything i want in the winter oh yeah initially getting here up on uh, this area over there climbing up here and it's like a couple of trucks uh, behind in front of me and behind me or whatever and there was one uh, well one truck two guys they came with two-wheel drive trucks good tires and all all terrains all good no, well actually the truck is also uh, all-wheel drive well four-wheel drive but their four-wheel drive function is broken so they came here two-wheel drive and uh, at some point uh, when I saw that I'm like oh my god I talked to some other guys I'm like you know what in like further down the road they're gonna block our road they're not gonna be able to climb the hills and that's exactly what happened just a little further and uh, they couldn't get up at all wheel spinning nothing they could do so I had to use my max tracks we used a couple of shovels and actually spent half an hour digging those guys out so it was a little workout in the winter before we got here I could have proceeded a little further over there from that hill but and actually a couple of guys I saw they did go there but it's kind of deep in here so I decided you know what I'm just gonna that's it this is gonna be my home for tonight uh, these guys were awesome enough to lend me the what do, what do you call that thing the drill the auger. ice drill it's an auger auger yeah okay the auger yeah uh, well I guess you guys packing that's it. no that's not it Okay. We're here for the so I got two holes happening. Smaller one here, took a few digs. Uh, got my minnow trap over there. And uh, the big crab one over there. But so far nothing. Just sausages. Uh, I have a feeling the whole uh, winter months crawfishing fishing is probably Louisiana stuff. Like southern states. It doesn't work like that in Canada. But man, look at this amazing view. So there's probably one, two, three, four, five, six fishing rods. And actually, yeah, there's some trouts happening. Some pops and then he's gonna come down fast. Uh, let's just call it a beer refill. Yeah, there, yeah, that's what we're calling it. <laughs> in Russia, we used to call those Argamak. I used to have one as in childhood. Pretty cool thing. Holy! It's absolutely gorgeous right now. Sun and moon at the same time. Look. Oh, beautiful. Just beautiful. Just for this kind of view, worth coming into this freaking cold. As far as traps go, two hours in, they're not really yielding anything. So, it's for sure this whole winter crop fishing it's southern states it's not applicable to canada by this time in the summertime i would have had already like a good 10 10 of them but right now nothing at all oh yeah it's getting very noticeably cold so i'm gonna resume tomorrow before i leave uh, i'll explain why i want a different rig 
it basically has to be as something like industrial bigger, the bigger one does that, truck okay, that's converted to four wheel so drive kind of like unimog but a little better a little know. bigger i guess yeah but bigger uh or something like a uh, so military u.s truck like oshkosh free axle or uh four axle a little big but basically uh, no more little toy truck plane and by toy trucks i mean 1500 to 4500 any of that range it's it's not enough space uh, you can load uh, of course camper on top but even with those campers those trucks to bubbly the those campers that you put on top were actually in reality over the gvrw rating even one ton trucks uh, you know we can pull like 30,000 pounds sure but as far as load capacity not towing capacity these trucks are limited and uh, it's also space too those campers they don't have enough space so I want like I said I want a little condo on the wheels so this is the morning of the next day and this is exactly the issue why this rig is burst overlander rig it can be uh, possibly you know home on the wheels so I got wet yesterday quite a bit uh, well my pants still a little bit wettish I had them kind of hanging from here from the ceiling and stove working there my socks are drying right now like any bits like this that happen uh, like for example clothing getting wet and it just so happened that for this uh, outing for one night I didn't take any spare clothing so which is a mistake I usually always have some spare but I didn't so I had to like oh my god tomorrow or today when I get out I need all this dry uh, so yeah I've been running this for a while yesterday the temperatures right now 25 Celsius 76 humidity it's not too bad in Fahrenheit that's 77 it's pretty pretty nice I got my little Mexico going on here with this and let's see monoxide 36 it's not too bad this is my new thing here I added to the setup kind of tracking carbon monoxide levels for example I, if I decide to do urban living then things like this is a big issue, big inconvenience like over time sure I can dry things and so on but I, like in real life it has to be kind of fast here it doesn't happen fast like that right, it took almost a whole night and uh, just too, too little space I need like a proper proper apartment box I got neighbors here they just arrived it's probably like 10 yeah. Man, with all the air coming in now, with the lid open, it's freezing outside. <laughs> I had my 25 Celsius inside just now and it's like open up and it's like <laughs> crazy. It's gotta be minus whatever right now for sure. Like I, I'm feeling it with my body already. Need to dress up. So there are of course different possibility of rigs that, are, that would be bigger than my truck and they range and uh, they serve different purposes and so on and this is actually an announcement so in uh, hopefully two three years i will have a different rig and my journey towards it i'll be creating a new series not sure what it's going to be called it's not going to be a vlog like like right now it's probably going to be its own thing and uh, it's it's going to be happening over the next two three years just as I uh, film stuff or find the information, research, kind of try to accumulate all the uh, information in that uh, little series, which is, you know, for me even to keep uh, track of various data and stuff that I accumulate uh, information and plus for other people that maybe consider overlanding but not sure what rig they got for what purpose or maybe they're not even sure at all what kind of overlanding they want to do, so that should help them.
like for people that are new my best advice definitely is to get out do more trips you know take the time off so whatever do not the weekend trips not long weekend not five days those those kind of trips very different they're just like same as camping basically you don't pack as much stuff you don't have to account for many things no get out for like two week trip three week trips that's gonna really show you what your needs are so coming back to rigs sportsmobile i already scratch it out because well it's expensive or probably 120k am i winning anything really okay sure the roof pops i can stand up uh, maybe a little kitchen a little uh, 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 water supply there no toilet no real toilet well porta potty whatever no real shower i can't have laundry it's 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 cramped it's little space it's it's not for what i want to do i want to leave and travel and be able to go places where normal rvs can't uh, or even where normal cars can't so it's got to be a serious rig yes big downside of course is many small trails gonna be off limits just like some rare trails I find off limits for me as well in this rig but it's okay there are plenty of places to see in the world that are accessible still even for big big rigs I'm willing to take that uh, negative side of a bigger rig so because i just mentioned the uh, sportsmobile obviously all the pop-up campers and so on it's not good i mean it's great to get out for a month or so if you're planning i'm planning to leave out a vehicle for like a good decade or something and travel and leave and work and go to office or whatever uh, it's not good obviously full campers for track beds like 3500s let's say they're usually bulky, 3500 is not designed for that weight, not really, so uh, most of the guys with uh, full uh, campers in the back are actually above their legal GVRW rating, actually they are, because those campers are heavy, even light, well, the light ones not so much, but it's still, it's crammed space, it's not enough. So that leaves pretty much things like earth roamers, earth cruisers, um, Earth Roamer, of course, is for rich. Earth Cruiser is well, accessible to middle class, but if you sell like apartment, whatever, because they start at 300,000, 350,000. So, what I need probably, and, and I, I don't want a, a pop up roof like Earth Cruisers, um, I just don't have that, my, that money to build an expedition, to buy an expedition vehicle that's ready to go they usually range yeah like like three hundred fifty thousand dollars to about 500 and then up to a million so uh, out of my reach but what i could do is get a platform a truck a industrial truck or military truck like what those guys are using uh, like uh, american expedition vehicles uh, the earth cruiser earth roamer uh, the unicat or there is a possibility of unimog actually I feel like getting for me getting Unimog. I'm not really winning anything. They're they're great for off road all that, but generally they tend to be short. They're not that much longer than my rig. So the box that you can build in it is still going to be a cramped box. Like it can be like a nice little apartment. There's Zitros, a Mercedes Zitros. That's a free axle uh, kind of Unimog. But again, it's Mercedes. Now you're going into crazy prices, crazy servicing, and so on. Uh, I want to stay away from Mercedes just because it's too expensive. So, uh, like Mitsubishi Fuso, for example, or cruisers use that. So maybe buy that platform. Uh, good thing about it, it's you can find a version that's already four wheel drive. You know, maybe put a locker in there, uh, put a lift, and basically order a box somewhere some fabrication shop but then all the insides I will probably have to build myself all the plumbing all the so I need to have at least at least 600 watt solar uh, because I do want to run that laundry uh, you know he water heater and all those things right all the like heavy electronics so I need a fast solar recharge for probably I don't know something like 500 amp hour battery bank it's it's gotta be a big rig basically so that's gonna be my series is researching towards that goal and of course uh, whenever i am in a position to buy the platform for the next rig i would have to sell my truck unfortunately and i love my truck like i love it for burst of landing it's perfect 
like even just now, right? I was sitting inside, 25 Celsius, it was nice, Mexico, I had my coffee, watching a movie or whatever. But yeah, it's 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 those trips month at a time only kind of thing. Although if someone told me right now, hey, you can get out for a year, you don't have to worry about money and work, I would grab this guy and in a heartbeat leave to cruise around for one year, you know, suck up all the discomforts uh, here and there and do it. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's just gotta be, gotta get a little bit more serious than this stuff. Anyway, let's see if uh, crayfish traps over there have anything. I'm gonna crack that ice. That's what the X is for. As usual, absolutely beautiful, beautiful views. Yeah. So what those guys actually <coughs> recommended yesterday is for me to put... Oh, I gotta watch out, there's some holes in here from yesterday. I'm not sure where, oh yeah, you can see over there. So they recommended putting snowballs like this, where my traps are, to insulate the, the water holes so they don't uh, freeze as much. And supposedly they said, yeah, I should be able to get my traps out. Just a little crack, thin layer, and good to go. Actually, here is a sample hole from yesterday. Let's see how much ice is actually accumulated. Oh yeah, yeah, thin layer, that's probably like uh, an inch, still crackable. Oh, that's gonna take a while to <clears throat> get my traps out. So I'll get to that, shut down the camera. Let's see. Yeah, I can, I can totally see how it definitely works, insulating the hole, for sure. It's all water here. Just gotta clean out this mush. There you go, that's a tip. Just cover your hole with snow or something. Let's see what's happening here. I bet there is nothing at all. Well, so they definitely are in the winter here, but it's definitely not as plentiful as summer. Overnight I would have had good numbers here. Okay, I call winter crow fishing in BC at least a fail. There you go, there's nothing in the big one, at all. It's all BS. There you go, so now you know. I guess I'll conclude this vlog. That was my little update on what's up. Oh yeah, by the way, once I finish right now Baja 2017 series, I'm debating if I should go back to 36 day overland. I still have about 14 episodes left. That's my most off roady series but it was also the first one of lots of technical issues as far as like my audio uh, loss of data and all kinds of stuff that's why i abandoned it it was nightmare to edit but since then i've learned tricks optimizations and so on plus voiceovers so i'm debating possibly jumping on that series kind of get it over quickly and then jump back to uh baja again but this time 2018 series and uh, in August, second half of August, it should be Arctic Circle trip. So hopefully by the time I come back from Arctic Circle, I am in a position where I can edit Arctic Circle and not edit stuff from way back. Still sitting about 25 videos behind right now. That's a little update. And with this awesome view, I bid you farewell. Ciao! Hey comrades, don't forget to hit that like button and also leave a comment and if you haven't subscribed yet, you should by hitting that subscription button and also bell notification next to it so you can actually get my video updates both in notification and your video feed and as well you can support this channel if you like my videos through PayPal or Patreon in the links down below or just after this video.